Do you ever think about where you came from? Perhaps you would understand this better if you knew more about how the different animals reproduce their own kind. To reproduce is another way of saying to have a baby, but it really means more than that. Reproduction is creating another life like yourself, and this is how life in all its forms is able to continue generation after generation. Every living thing has a way of creating a new life similar to itself. Among those animals which we know best, life starts when a sperm, a tiny one-celled organism produced by the male, joins with an egg. The egg, or ovum as it's sometimes called, is produced by the female, and it must be of the same type of animal as the male. When these two come together, the cells start to multiply, and the new life thus formed starts to grow. In time, it will grow into a living creature similar to its parents, whether it be fish, frog, snake, bird, insect, or man himself. Scientists tell us that the earliest forms of life lived in the sea and reproduced in the water. The words that are used to describe the first steps in the reproductive process are courtship, in which male and female stimulate interest in each other, mating, in which the male and female come together, fertilization, in which the male sperm joins with the female egg to start a new life. Do you know what these angelfish are doing? They're busy preparing a place for the female to lay her eggs. This is part of their courtship. She is laying the eggs now. Do you see them? After she has laid a few eggs, the male will start to fertilize them by producing sperms from his body and spreading them among the eggs. This is called external fertilization because it occurs outside of their bodies. The movement of the water will help to spread the male sperms among the eggs. Several hundred eggs will be laid. Why do you suppose she lays so many eggs? Now most of the eggs have been fertilized. A new life has been started in all of the eggs entered by the male sperm. When the young fish hatch, they still have the yolk attached. This will supply nourishment until each has learned to find its own food. Soon the young eye will be swimming around freely looking for their own food. Many of them will be eaten by larger fish, but a few will survive and grow into a new generation of adults. Then each of these will find a mate and the wonderful process of reproduction will start all over again. Do you know what amphibians are? You find them in streams and ponds. They're animals such as frogs, toads, and salamanders. Like the fish, they are born in water. They live there as polywogs for a while, but soon they grow into air-breathing animals. Just as with fish, the female amphibian lays her eggs in the water, and the male fertilizes them with sperms from his body. This is a cluster of frog eggs. As soon as the egg is fertilized, the new infant, or embryo, begins to grow. In a few days, the tiny animal grows large enough to free itself. Now this newborn polywog, like all new forms of life, 
must learn to take care of itself and to find the food and nourishment it needs in order to grow. Finally, after many days as a polywog, it will begin to show signs of becoming what its parents were, in this case, a frog. Among the fish and the amphibians, fertilization by the male always occurs after the eggs have been released from the female's body. Reptiles are quite different. They reproduce by internal fertilization. Since there is no water to carry the sperms to the eggs, the male must deposit the sperms inside the female's body. For this snake, courtship and mating have already occurred. Within her body, sperm and egg have joined, and fertilization has occurred. Many reptiles lay eggs with shells, which protect the life inside. In her body, the shell has formed around the fertilized egg. Within the shell, there is also a yolk, which will provide nourishment as the baby grows. Reptiles usually protect the eggs until they hatch. It will be several days before hatching occurs. Some snakes produce live young. When born, they are still in a sack. It also contains the remainder of the yolk, which has provided nourishment. Soon, the young snake breaks out to take its first breath of air. From this moment on, it must care for itself. Thus, a new life has been created, but this time by internal fertilization. For most birds, mating takes place in the spring. For each type of animal, there is a specific time when the ovum inside the female's body becomes ready for fertilization. This occurs in a regular cycle. And with birds, as with many animals, this period stimulates courtship. The same two swans will usually remain together for life. And for them, courtship is a very exciting period. Birds, like reptiles, reproduce by internal fertilization. Building a nest is an important part of courtship among wild birds. Both male and female work on the nest, preparing it for the eggs that will soon come. In order for an egg to be fertile, the sperms must join with the egg inside the mother's body. Then the hard shell will form around the egg. Inside the hard shell, there will also be the yolk and the white to provide nourishment for the growing embryo. The young of some birds, such as these blue jays, are quite helpless when they hatch out. They must be fed and looked after for many days. A chicken embryo takes about 21 days to mature inside the shell. This chick is ready to break out of the hard shell. It must do so all by itself. The struggle to free itself is an important exercise for the new chick. It seems to gain strength from these efforts. Within a few hours, it will be strong enough to be on its feet and looking for food. Most insects go through four stages of development during reproduction. The egg, the larva, the pupa, and the adult insect. The male and female cecropia moth must come together to start the process of reproduction. But now the male has nothing further to do with raising the family. The female lays the fertilized eggs and leaves them to hatch by themselves. However, she lays them near a food supply where the young will have the best chance for survival. Bees are also insects, but they are quite different in their reproductive process. 
Bees are called social insects because they live and work together in a colony. It is well organized and each bee performs its special role. There is only one queen bee and she lays all the eggs in the hive. Most of the bees that hatch from the eggs are worker bees. They are females, but cannot lay eggs that will reproduce new bees. They just do the work, such as taking care of the queen and feeding the young that the queen has reproduced. There are also a few male bees called drones. One of these male bees must join with the female queen to start the process of reproduction. Male bees have no stinger and are quite harmless. Mating takes place when the drone and queen come together while they are flying. The drone dies and the queen returns to the hive where she soon starts laying eggs. She will keep the sperms from the drone in her body and during her lifetime she will lay thousands of eggs. Most of these will be fertile eggs which will produce the female worker bees. She will also lay a few unfertilized eggs that will produce male drones. Within a few days after the egg is laid, a larva hatches. The worker bees feed the larva and it grows quite rapidly. When the larva almost fills the cell, the worker bees seal the top of the cell. Now the larva changes slowly into the pupa. In a few more days, this pupa develops into the adult bee. This new young bee must cut an opening through the cover of the cell. Now this young worker bee is ready to do the work in the hive and in the field. Although it will supply care and food for many newborn bees, it will never reproduce young of its own. Only the queen can do this, and she cannot live forever. In order for the colony to survive, it must raise a new queen. The workers will choose one of the newly hatched larvae. The cell will be enlarged, and the larva given special care and food. Soon, a new queen will emerge. In this way, life is reproduced in this highly organized world of the social insects. Among the most interesting of the animals to us are the mammals, because we humans belong to this group. With sheep, as with all mammals, the male and female must come together, and the male sperms must be deposited inside the female's body. When one of these sperms joins with an egg, a new life begins, and the embryo starts to grow inside the mother's body. The time between fertilization and the birth of the baby is called the gestation period. This period will vary among different types of animals. With sheep, it's about five months. During gestation, the baby receives its nourishment from the mother's body. Her body also provides oxygen although the baby will not take its first breath of air until the moment it is born. Have you ever seen an animal being born? This is an important moment in the life of both the mother and the baby, and for this mother sheep, that time has come. The baby is still covered by the sac that surrounded it for five months inside the mother's body. She will help to remove the sac. This baby will walk in a few hours. Do you know how long it took you to learn to walk? This mother sheep is not through with her labor. Twins are quite common among sheep. The second will receive the same attention as the first.
they will grow healthy and strong on a diet of milk and grasses. Within a few months, they will be as large as their parents, and in less than a year, they will be able to have babies of their own. Thus, each new form of life reproduces itself in its own special way. Now let's think about what we've discovered from the examples of animal reproduction we've seen. Do you remember what we said about courtship, mating, and fertilization? What are the two types of fertilization that we talked about? What animals are the most like us humans, and why do you think they are? Did you learn anything else about animal reproduction today that will help you understand yourself?